Hello folks, Alan here. Uh, today I want to show you guys how to do uh, trigger loads and saves using the MIDI OX utility. I've been saying I was going to do this for a little while, so here it is. Um, you need to go on your computer and do a Google search for MIDI OX, M-I-D-I dash OX. I'll try to put a link in this post somewhere, but in the meantime, uh, go do that and download it. It's small. Uh, install it on your computer. Uh, I'm doing this on a Windows computer, but I'm pretty sure MIDI OX works also on Mac. Um, also, make sure your strike is plugged into your computer using a USB MIDI, and um, we'll get ready to do that in a second. So while you're doing that, I'm going to do a quick little playing demo just for the hell of it. I don't know what's going to happen, so we'll see. Anyway, here we go. Okay, I'm back. Time for the lesson. Today's tutorial is how to save trigger settings using the MIDI OX utility from your module as well as loading them back in. Um, the module has no easy basic way to save your trigger settings uh, on the module itself. They do not get saved to the SD card. Only your kits and samples and things having to do with instruments are on the SD card and only the user stuff. Again, none of your internal kits are on the SD card. You guys hopefully know that by now. But anyway, a lot of people want to understand about these trigger settings. The only way to save them is to use some sort of a MIDI utility and dump them onto a computer uh, using a SysX dump. Now, Elisis does give us that option, and this is not too difficult since I'm showing you how to do it. Took me a little while to figure it out. I'm not a MIDI expert. Uh, I'm getting better at it, but either way, uh, this should help. So anyway, everybody should go 
download uh, the MIDI OX utility from www.midiox.com. It's up here on the screen. The utility is called MIDI-OX, but there's no dash in the website. Um, I believe it's available for Windows and Mac, but I'm doing it on Windows. I'm Mac illiterate and don't have one anyway, but uh, I believe it is available on a Mac. So what I suggest you guys all do first be, is get that, pause this video here and go ahead, download it and install it on your computer. Also, make sure your strike uh, module is connected to the computer via USB and uh, for, for the MIDI connection. So USB MIDI connection. All right, take a little pause, play the Jeopardy music, whatever, and we'll be back in a second. All right, so hopefully you guys are done. You downloaded it, you installed it on your machine, your module is plugged in. So first thing might as well do, since I have the module screen up already, is show you where the SysX dump is from on the, on the uh, module. So it's very simple. You just go press utility and then the SysX button. I guess it's the F4 button. And it says press enter to send a MIDI exclusive dump. We're not going to do that yet. We have to bring up the utility first. So. Stand by, I'm gonna to go to my uh, screen. I'm using um, OBS Studio and I'm not an expert here, so it might be a little clumsy, but we'll get there. All right, here we go. Let's see, display capture. Okay, got a little funny mirror situation going here, but uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna start. MIDI OX. I have the icon down here and there it is. So I don't remember if I configured it this way or what, but this happens to be at a monitor output. You may see that, you may not. Um, I minimized it so it's only a small window. We're not really, uh, we don't really need everything. Uh, the next thing under options, say pass SysX and let me just see something. Okay, yeah, we want to we want to keep that checked. So pass this X and go under MIDI filter. Um, take your note on and note off. Check those and check filter out data as well as display. The reason we do this is because when we add the device to the utility, and if you happen to hit um, your strike you're gonna get a bunch of MIDI feedback. It's gonna send the note, play the note, it's gonna be a mess. So do that, it prevents that from happening. All right, next thing we do is go to options, MIDI devices. This is where we add um, the strike to the utility. Um, you should see it somewhere in the list. I don't know how many MIDI devices you guys have, maybe only one, this could be the only one, but either way, highlight them in the input and output and say, okay. All right, and you can see in the little monitor output, if you have that window open, that it did open up the module. Next thing you do is you go to View, and you go to SysX, and it's gonna bring up what they call a scratch pad here. I'm gonna make it a little bigger, okay? Then under here, go to SysX, and say Receive Manual Dump, and a little window comes up and it says wait for completion. So we're just gonna wait. I'm gonna go back to the uh, um, OBS Studio just to keep things um, straight. And well, it's not showing, but now I'm gonna hit the enter key on the module, which of course is in the middle of your arrow keys next to the shuttle wheel. So I'm just gonna hit enter. It says sending MIDI very quick, done. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to MIDI OX. And you can see it now says 236 bytes received, say done. And here's your MIDI data in the display window. Now all we have to do from here to save it, and this is, these are your trigger settings, folks. Just go to display window save as 
and find a place on your computer where you want to save them. I suggest naming it something meaningful uh, with the date so you know when it is. And hit save. In this case, I'm using a name I already had. I'm overwriting it. And we're done with that. So now I'm going back to OBS. Take this off. All right, so now you have your MIDI trigger settings saved. Now, these, this is great because first of all, if you ever have to do a factory reset for any reason and you have your trigger settings saved, hopefully you do this regularly. You can load them up, which I'm gonna show you next how to do, but if you have to reset something for some reason, you can get your settings back. If you go down the dreaded uh, rabbit hole where you screw things up in your triggers, really badly. Let's say you're setting something and you didn't realize you had no chase on and it changed it in some other drum. You're not aware and you don't know what the heck you did. You'll never figure it out because you did all this other stuff. Now you have a backup and a way to get back to where you were and it's very easy. So um, there we go. So we saved it. You have them saved. You can rest easy and sleep well at night. All right, that's all for the saving portion of this program. Okay, back again for part two of the MIDI OX trigger saving and loading lesson. This is the load portion of this video. All right, very easy to do. So let's say you really screwed things up on your uh, on your um, module. Let's just uh, go into triggers here. Let me just change something. Um, Tom Four curve, just so you could see. Let's make it something bizarre like that. I don't know why anybody would want to use that curve, frankly, but for anything. But um, maybe there's a reason that I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so we have that set right now. We said. And you go, man, what happened there? I don't know. Uh, what else got messed up? You know, I thought I was changing uh, the symbol, but I had no chase on. I might have touched something with my knee, and it switched, and I was messing with it. Now everything's all screwed up in my triggers. But, but, got to get my finger in there. But I saved it just the other day using uh, the Midio X utility, so I'm in luck. So let's go to the uh, MIDI OX utility now and save ourselves, okay? So again, let's see here. All right, so here we go. So what do we do? All we want to do is send the uh, sysx file that we saved back to our module. So there is something we do need to do first. Under options again, go to MIDI devices and undo the input. Um, apparently, uh, if you send it, keep that on, you get a, into a SysX uh, sending loop. Now, there may be other ways to stop that, but again, I'm not an expert here, but this works. So, um, okay, so anyway, looking at the um, uh, monitor output, we can now see that we closed uh, the input, closed the output, and now we just open the output, did not open the input. So we only need to be sending from the computer to the module, not reading it in again, because we're loading s the settings that we saved into the module. All right, then all we really need to do is go to Actions, Send, SysX File, it brings up that scratch pad, uh, but um, don't really need it. Pick the sysx file that you want to send. In this case, it's the, the latest one. Should be the latest one for you guys, but actually you can do anything you want. So just pick that and say open. File in progress. Let's get that out of the way, and you can see it sent the sysx file that we had saved before. So... Let's see if it worked. So let's go back to uh, OBS Studio. 
and check. Ah, lo and behold, you can see that the uh, curve that I reset to spline is now back to linear, which is what was in the saved sysx file. So that's all there is to it. You don't have to do anything else. So that's how we save and load MIDI-OX stuff. And I know this is going to be really helpful for you guys because uh, this way you could mess with your trigger settings. As long as you save a, a, the latest version that you're happy with, um, and you can do this over and over again. Let's say you change something and, and save it. Um, go change more stuff, save it. This way, if you're really doing a lot of experimenting, you don't have to fear, um, you know, of really screwing things up and not being able to get back. So, you know, it's like doing any kind of a backup. You know, you do it as you need it. If you're mixing recordings, I tend to save a lot of versions uh, of the mix while I'm doing it. And I think the same goes uh, for this. I think if you're making a lot of changes, every time you get, a, you know, a few changes that you're happy with, and if you're going to be doing a lot of stuff, I suggest just quickly saving it to a file with a name that tells you where you were at. And um, that way, if you screw things up, you can go back. And then when you're all done and you get something that you think you're going to keep, save it again and, again, call it, you know, um, you know, I don't know, just put the date on and, you know, some designation that it's the completed trigger settings at that time. All right, everybody. Well, that's it. And um, good luck. And keep rocking, folks.